Qualifying for the Qatar Grand Prix is over and Max Verstappen is once again on pole position after another dominant session. But what did we learn? Well, I am going to be taking you know, a look at the data as we do a data analysis from qualifying for the Qatar Grand Prix. Now let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about McLaren, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying in Qatar was an interesting session and the lap times were significantly slower than the last time F1 was at the circuit in 2021. In 2021, Lewis Hamilton stormed to pole position with a lap time of a 120.827, whereas in today's qualifying session, Max Verstappen was only able to clock in a lap time of a 123.778. The Qatar circuit was recently resurfaced, meaning that the circuit was not fully gripped up. Due to this weekend also being a sprint weekend, the teams and drivers were not able to get as much rubber down on the circuit, and alongside this, the wind has been very strong in qualifying today, and this meant that sand from the desert near the circuit blew onto the track, meaning that there was very low grip. Because of this low grip surface, it meant that the circuit evolution was absolutely huge. And to show that, I have all the lap times of Max Verstappen from today's qualifying session. And in this, you can see that his lap times improved by just over 3 seconds. So, let's compare the two laps. In blue was his fastest lap, and in white was his first fast lap in Q1. When looking at these two times, what can we see? Well, what we can see is that Max is faster just about everywhere in Q3. In the braking zones, Max is able to carry a lot more speed. Not only this, but he is also able to get onto the throttle much quicker in multiple sections. The reason for being able to do this is because the dust has cleared off the track and the circuit has rubbed in a little bit more, meaning that Verstappen is able to get great traction and get back onto full throttle and power a lot sooner. This was to be expected, especially after seeing just how slow the times were in practice. It will be interesting to see how the circuit continues to evolve as the weekend progresses. The current slow pace might mean that teams actually end up getting away with just a one stop in the main race instead of the potential two stop that we otherwise would have seen. So, after seeing this, the question is from qualifying what teams were looking good and what teams were struggling. Well, one team that was struggling in qualifying was the Haas team, as Kevin Magnussen was out in Q1 and Nico Hulkenberg went out in Q2 as they were struggling for grip in the Haas car that has now been severely outdeveloped by their rivals, which is something we should have come to expect. Let's look at the times of Hulkenberg from Q2 and compare it to the driver who is in P10 from Q2, which was Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. And what can we see? Well, what we can see is that Hulkenberg actually has a lot more top speed than Bottas, maybe indicating that Haas were running with a lower downforce setup. However, it seems that they were suffering on corner exits and also with being on a lower downforce, they could not carry the speed through the tight and twisty sections of the Qatar circuit. Because of this, Bottas is able to steam through the corners much faster than Nico Hülkenberg, which you would expect if Alfa Romeo is running with more downforce. For Haas, this is a bit of a disaster day, and it's looking very likely that they will not be able to feature at all in the race, as they are typically the team that is hardest on their tyres, and they typically have the worst race pace of any team, and already being down the field in qualifying, then yeah, things are not looking too strong for them in the race. For Alpine, however, they had a fantastic day, which I think surprised a lot of people. Going into the weekend, according to the simulations, Alpine were looking like potentially being the slowest team overall. However, Gasly is 7th, and Ocon is in 8th place, with only 2 tenths of a second between them. When you look at their fastest laps, you can see that Gasly makes up the majority of the time at the beginning of the lap, carrying more speed and getting onto power sooner. However, as the lap unfolds, you can see that Ocon starts to really claw back some lap time, and honestly, if you put the first half of Gasly's lap with the second half of Ocon's lap, then it would have been possible that Alpine could have had a car in the top three especially with the McLaren drivers losing their fastest lap times due to track limit violations. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. 
I have also set up a Patreon, which you can check out in the description below. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top five teams and let's start with McLaren. For McLaren, qualifying today was an unfortunate result as Lando Norris will be starting Sunday's race from P10 and Oscar Piastri will be starting in P6 and this is all down to track limits. Had Norris and Piastri kept it on track, then Norris would be lining up in P2 and Piastri would be P4 on the grid. But now they have a lot of work to do if they want to find themselves on the podium. Let's compare now the legal lap of Oscar Piastri to the lap of George Russell to see where Russell had the advantage. Firstly, it should be noted that due to the track evolution, Russell did his lap a little bit later on and therefore had better track conditions. And you can see that right at the beginning of the lap as Russell can carry more speed going through the first corner and also gets onto power sooner than Piastri. Towards the end of the lap though, you can see that Russell carries a little bit more speed initially in the first few corners. However, towards the end of the twisty section, the McLaren with its superior grip starts to work back in Piastri's favour as the McLaren gives him more grip and more confidence and he starts to slowly claw back some of the time. In the main Grand Prix on Sunday, McLaren have found themselves in a compromised situation. They have good pace over one lap, however these mistakes have made it so that scoring a podium may not be possible for them now. For Aston Martin, qualifying was as much of a tale of two halves as I think it possibly could have been. Lance Stroll found himself out in Q1 and is starting in 17th place, where his teammate Fernando Alonso is starting the race from 4th place. Stroll's Q1 lap was over 1 second slower than Fernando's. So let's compare the two laps from Q1 to see why Stroll is so far off the pace. From this graph, it is plain to see where the differences are. Alonso is able to get better grip and traction on the exits of corners and through the triple apex towards the end of the lap. Fernando carries so much more speed and you can see that when you look at the delta, you can see that Stroll loses so much time through this section of the lap. In the race on Sunday, it is highly unlikely that Lance Stroll will be able to find himself in the points. But for Fernando, a top six should be possible. It is unlikely that he will be able to fight the Mercedes ahead of him, but he might be able to hold off Charles Leclerc and one of the McLarens that are behind him. For Lance though, he needs to look over the data and try his best to find a way to improve his pace in the sprint shootout to at least give him a chance to score some points in the sprint race. For Ferrari, qualifying today was anything but easy as the Ferrari looked like it was really struggling for grip in the windy conditions. Typically, we have seen that the Ferrari can be a snappy car. We saw both Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz struggling with the back as it snapped out on them at different moments during qualifying. And because of this, we saw that Sainz was struggling with grip and traction, which led to him being eliminated from the second part of qualifying. Let's now compare the times from Q2 for both Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. And what can we see? During the first half of the lap, there is not really anything to tell between the two drivers, which is something that we have become used to seeing through the last couple of qualifying sessions. However, when it comes to the back end of the lap, you can see that Sainz starts to drop off more than Leclerc, which ultimately led to Carlos Sainz being eliminated. In the race on Sunday, I can see Ferrari struggling with their pace, as the car does not look stable right now, and tyre wear could make things a little bit tricky for them. For Mercedes, you could argue that they have luckily found themselves on the front row and on the second row with a P2 and P3, as McLaren were penalised, which led to George Russell starting the race from P2 and Lewis Hamilton in P3. However, even with Russell being on the front row, he is still half a second behind Max Verstappen on pole position. So let's compare the pole lap of Verstappen to that of George Russell. Verstappen, as we come to expect, has incredible straight line speed hanging into turn one, but also he is able to maintain the grip and have brilliant downforce as the Red Bull is far more efficient than the Mercedes with its grip, meaning that as the lap unfolds, the Red Bull of Max Verstappen is able to just go faster and faster. And you can see that by the end of the lap, Verstappen has an incredible advantage over George Russell. And this was without Max Verstappen going out at the end of the session. 
For the race on Sunday, this is a golden opportunity for Mercedes to distance themselves from Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship and potentially get both drivers on the podium. And finally for Red Bull, it was a dominant day as Max Verstappen crushes the entire field to take another pole position. But for Sergio Perez, it was another disappointing day as he finds himself out in Q2 once again as track limits eliminate him from the session. We've already seen Max Verstappen's pole position lap and we know just how dominant it is. For the race on Sunday, Max Verstappen should already be world champion going into the race, but if he's not, then it's highly likely that he will win the world championship on Sunday if he doesn't do it on Saturday. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.